Okay, my name is uh, Joseph Bemisoye Akambi from Ogbomoso, western part of Nigeria. Uh, that is uh, where we speak uh, Yoruba. And the general languages in Nigeria, major ones is, uh, I mean, there are three. Yoruba, Igbo, and uh, Awusa Fulani. Uh, uh, in my village, uh, to Gumasho, my grandfather happened to be the king of the place. And uh, I happened to be a prince of that uh, little village. So, uh, my uh, small village, which is called uh, Bai Yaoji, OJ is uh, popular because at that time, in the olden days, uh, the great grandfather ancestors was a warrior, he was a hunter. Uh, the king of the empire was uh, Allah you know, for you. And it happened that um, elements are disturbing a laughing wives when they go fetch for water and he called my own uh, great grandfather who is an hunter to come and uh, drive all these uh, wild animals elephant away from the place where the wife of the are laughing where they were fetching for water. And my great grandfather went there. There was a river on the way. It happened as the history will tell us that the river was overflowing. And the king asked my great grandfather to come. And he asked to cross this uh, big river. Well, we, we were told that with the help of uh, uh, Juju or the type of uh, uh, weapon they used at that time, he flew over the river and attended the call of the Alafi. And when he was there, he killed so many elephants so that they don't even need for any other food uh, to eat. But the liver of uh, elephant is what they, they eat. And that's why they give him all these names that uh, he kill elephants and they use uh, livers of meat of the elephant as food for many months. And he brought some money, I mean, elephant to the city, life, for the king to see and for the people to see the people of uh, the city of Oyo at that time. So that's why uh, Allah gave him the title Iba Yaoje Akperni Kari Ayaba Afi Edoyuni Sokelibu. So, he went home with the crown of the king. So, uh, in short, that is uh, the short story of uh, my village and how we became a ruling house in my family. Well, uh, I attended the uh, primary uh, school living uh, in uh, in Ubumasho. and uh, at that time we we were under the British. Every year we go for Empire Day, where all schools we line up, and my school, Ijeru Baptist Day School was the band leader, I mean the band that we give the music at the parade. Uh, even when the queen 
the present queen became the king, I mean the Queen of England, he visited Nigeria. And our band at Ugumosho was uh, elected to go to the headquarter, Ibadan, to give them music at the parade. Uh, I attended the secondary modern school. It's like a middle school here in the U.S. And after the middle school, we, I still went to, uh, to college uh, teacher training. To, from there, after some years, I still attended the grade two teacher training, another two years, which will be equivalent to high school uh, graduate at the time. Uh, to cut the story short on that line, I was one of those who were given scholarship in 1976 to go overseas for uh, a program that the then head of state, Muritala, called Operation Feed the Nation in Agriculture. And I was selected to go to the U.S. and study fisheries. Uh, I was here in 1976. And when I finished my first degree, uh, the state or your state came to the U.S. and they awarded uh, state uh, students some uh, postgraduate uh, scholarship too. I was again opportune to be one of them to read my master's in uh, fisheries and wildlife at uh, the University of Missouri, Columbia. So, and since then, uh, we went home to serve the government. And, uh, but when we were there, there was uh, an accident with one of my children who was born with a corrosion explosion and 52 of our body surface was affected. So my church here in Missouri, they, they, they secured an hospital that gave children in Ohio a treatment free. And we were sponsored to that uh, Cincinnati Strana Hospital, where she was treated. We thank God for everything. She, she was 14 when we came in 76 and graduated in 2003 as a medical doctor, because she decided to help other people as they did help her. So, that's uh, uh, my life in short. And uh, now I'm retired. And I have three kids. They are now grown up. And they are all girls. Uh, two are married. One is still single. I have uh, three grandchildren too. They are ladies now. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have interest in uh, what they call a Gungun festival in my area, Yoruba land. Every year at this time, July, when they are harvesting the rainy season uh, crop, there is plenty of food in the city and then that is when they celebrate this uh, Egungun festival. Egungun festival is um, uh, the Yoruba people, they believe that there is one God, great God, that we cannot go directly to him for any request. So they need uh, a middleman who is strong to, to go there and ask for our request and then bring the answers 
from the great God. And later, some other religion came too. They have Medu, uh, Medu man, or Medu somebody that people worship. And like Islamic religion came after the traditional one. So Islam, Islamic religion, they go through Muhammad. And the Christianity is through Jesus Christ. So this Egungun festival is the time that all people from near and far will come back home to celebrate. And at this time, the newborn babies will be introduced to families outside the city. Because many people traveled and far and near about that. The time of Egungun festival, they will come back home. Egungun is uh, like a masquerade. It's, um, it will cover, it's, uh, it, will, it will be in garment of the ancestors, those who are the ancestors, uh, the great warrior who first uh, came to that place. And he will present himself, cover his face and everything. And the, the worshippers, they worship with uh, animals like goats and ants, uh, that is chicken, uh, to make festival. And uh, each family, the nuclear family, like husband and wife and the kid, they will bring their own animal to worship. The, uh, this Egungun festival. So at this time, this Egungun will visit uh, each uh, family and we pray for them. And they will ask them to whatever their need is to take it to the great God so that by next year they, they may give a result. And they will tell the Egungun that, well, we asked for kids. For those who are barren last year, they have gotten kids now. So we thank him. And that is why we are happy and we are uh, making this uh, festival a special one. So this uh, Gungun, they, they, they go with drums and dance around. You go to YouTube and you, you go to a Gungun festival in your state. It will show what I'm saying. This Egogo, we dance around, the women we followed, the men we followed, and they dance around the city. And we, they do this every year, and it's what we children look up to uh, every year, because it's the time we have enough food and meat to eat and we dance with the Egungun wherever Egungun goes. Mm. How long is it's just uh, for two months. It's for two months and then everybody will go back to the farm where they come from and the, those who came from outside the, I mean, outside the city will go back to where they are living. Uh, the custom is uh, uh, what our parents used to tell us that and what Christianity that they accepted uh, trained us for that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, people don't hurt other people. They are kind to neighbors. Uh, even children are not raised by the parents alone. They are raised by the neighbors and uh, uh, people in the community. Not, the, not only the parents or at school. And uh, to the extent that even if you are selling something, you are selling banana, you don't have to go to the market. You just put it outside your house. Put 
the banana leaf and then put the a banana on it. And everybody knows that it's like 10 kobo or 30 kobo. And they take their own and put the money on banana tree. And when they come back in the evening, if there is a banana that was not sold, they meet, we meet it there. And the money of those that were sold will be collected by the owner. Nobody will steal it. Uh, but nowadays, even if you put banana there, you are sitting down there, they can, they can kidnap you and the banana and take you away. I would have loved that those love for the neighbors is still around. That's what the parents used to teach the kids. Even when you are going on the street and you see the clothes, they dry on the wire or outside the house that is falling down, then you take it, you put it back on it. You don't steal it, you don't take it away, you don't kick it as ball. You keep it neat and you put it back. So all those things are the culture that I would have loved that we still practice so that uh, there will be peace in the community, so that we love each other, in short. Uh, I was a village teacher when I was transferred back to the city at Ibadan. And I was at the elementary school teaching. And uh, in 1975, I, I got married in 1974, December. In 1965, I mean, uh, 1974, December, uh, one teacher came from Owo. Owo is far away, it's like about three states that we cross before you come to Ekiti, where Owo is. This guy came from Ekiti and joined us at the elementary school. And we welcomed him in that day. And I was by the road at Ibadan Makola, veterinary medicine. I was at the third floor. And I saw this guy downstairs and he said, I said, ah, ah, his name is Ojo. Ah, Ojo, how are you? Where are you going? He said he was looking for a place. You know, I just came today and I want a place very close to school so that I can establish myself there. And immediately, without missing what I say, come upstairs. We've gotten a place for you. And he came up there, are you sure you get a place for me? And I showed the place to him that the guy is living at the end of the week because it's at the end of the month. And he was happy. This is the guy who informed me about the scholarship that I had to come to this America because we live together. He just came one day and was telling me that there are people in Lagos told him about scholarship, so we have to get the form. And I could not believe him. He went to Lagos and collected the forms and everything. He gave me my own copy. I said, when you are not the son of the governor, you are not related to the head of state, you think they will give you scholarship? Uh, he filled the form, I filled the form. In 75, um, I mean, in 75, early 75, came to tell me that, oh, they have selected him as, uh, I mean, as uh, one of the uh, scholars to go overseas. I said, you? I still didn't believe him. He asked me, you have not received any uh, alert or any note? I said, no, I did not even fill the form. He was annoyed. But eventually, 
he left Nigeria for the U.S. And before he left, I filled the form. He made me fill the form, and we submitted it. And by 75 ending, I was elected too. So that shows that what our parent was telling us to be nice to other people, if I did not ask him to come to take the room that will be vacant in my place, I may not have the opportunity to, to have, to have the, this uh, opportunity to be one of the students uh, for scholarship at that time. So it's, it's good if you are good. You, you have to help other people too because you don't know where your own help will come from may not come from the one you have, but definitely it will come from somewhere. The traditional medicine we were using then was not as quick as if they heal those who are sick as the hospital, the Western uh, uh, medicine they brought to Bumosho at that time, the hospital they brought, they can heal people. So the other religious, they bring their own people too, so that the hospital heal them and they become Christian. And um, it is there we learn about all these uh, Christian norms, prayer and God. But what they did that hurt me at times was all our own gods that we were using before, they said they should collect all of them and burn them away, which they did. So some people, even grown-up people now, they don't know more about the traditional religion and how they work. So the little mercy, knowledge, the grandparents had. Nobody cares to know about them since you can go to the hospital and get their tablets and you'll be here instead of, you know, going to them to grant uh, this uh, back of trees, root of trees together to make their own medicine will take days why the hospital you go there you pay and you get your medicine so people forget about that and the parent too or the children they don't even care to write it down and know how they mix them and they work those are the things i have concern about that maybe we should have developed our own uh, Medicare, different from uh, the Western world. But since the Western Medicare came, we didn't worry about our own. Even when you have a little cut, they take you to the hospital. And our father, they had some leaves they plug in the bush, rub it together, put it on the pen, it will, it will heal up. Uh, even with the TV, there was a time when I was at Ibadan. That was not so long. And a car was missing. And we went to this guy at Ibadan, the same. And he brought his uh, plate, his bow, calabash with sand and said uh, a young person uh, like eight, nine or ten at, mo at most at that time should come and look at that sound when he made his incantation and all the medicine he wanted to do and on this thing and he said he should be looking at that. 
And uh, this young lady was saying that there is somebody in the sand, somebody in that sand. Yes, he said there is somebody. It's going on the road to the main road to join the taxi. And he take them to our house at Iwo Road in Nevada. And he said he should report whatever he discover over there. And he said the same thing. And when we got home, these people at home said, yes, that is what they were doing. They were those who are washing clothes, those who are uh, singing and all the rest of it, when we got home. So we went back again and he said they want to look for the car. Then he said the, the, the little girl said that uh, the car is at uh, Oninyani. He gave us the description of the place and everything. So, I mean, that is uh, uh, something which I cannot explain. I was there, but I can't explain it. How they found where the stolen car was, and they found it there, and he used his key to start the car and took it to the police station. Even though police still retained the car for about four months before they could get it, they have to spend money again. They are not the one who discover it. They are not anything. I've been looking for the group of elites that are working on that, that uh, we will be using our own language for our education, reading and learning instead of English because it will be easier for the kids who are there to understand than learning in English, which is not their own language. And for uh, not only younger people, even people who are, um, that are older than those who are like under 50, under 60s, some of them cannot speak our language well anymore. Because even when they were, excuse me, when they were going to school, the compulsory that they must not speak language, I mean Yoruba in the house, so that they can do well at school with English. So they don't know Yoruba anymore. Now for people who are now working on turning everything upside down, to change our learning, because I am one of those two that we ask questions. Why is it that Chinese, they use their language in education and they do better? Indians, they do the same thing. All of that country, Iran, all of them, they use their language. Why can't we use our own language? And the population of Yoruba people around the world if not more than the population of U.S., I, I doubt it. So uh, I wish our younger generation can, can speak our language. Each house, they, they give their own children marks. It will be done before you are five years old. If they see Anybody with marks, with my marks in those days, they know where I come from. They know exactly who I am. And they give respect and honor to that you deserve when they see you. That's why we have tribal marks. And in a family, because uh, there are people who do that as their profession, give marks. Uh -huh. So those who are outside the city, they will bring the child who is of age back home for the marking. So that whenever, wherever they go, whatever they do, they will, they will stop and bring the child who is four or five for marking. And they will mark them and treat it until they go back to wherever they are. 
but they are not doing much anymore. We still get people doing it, but not popular anymore in Yoruba land. And in our own family, so that uh, now those who are after me, nobody has a mark anymore. Nobody has mark because uh, I'm the firstborn, that's why I have the mark. I supposed to be the king about a uh, few years back, but I refused it. And uh, with uh, the kingmakers, my mother, myself, and elders in my house, we went there to give them anything and to make my promise that I support any of my cousins that is interested in it. And the one who was made is dead now. I think uh, 2020, it's 2020, not 2021. He died 2020. So he spent about 13 years or so before he died. And at a big obas like uh, uh, a laughing for you, they even have uh, people they call Abobaku. Those who will die when the king dies, they will prepare to die. And the uh, security and all the uh, these uh, forces that are around the king, they know that these are Abobaku. These Abobaku, they will. Mm, they are men, they are always men. And they will see that they are barren. They can't they can have sex with, uh, with uh, the king's wife. So they'll be living like they don't have job, they just eat, they live for the time Oba will die. And when Oba die, they will kill them too and bury them together. Those are the people who will be helping Oba in heaven. <laughs> but nowadays, they don't have a babaku anymore. This one is, a, is a for the head of the community. Instead of shaking hand, he will do this and all other people, they will prostrate. Mm -hmm. For Yoruba, is is this one. And even when the one who comes to you, you are very, very junior to him, you won't prostrate. He will prostrate for you. Not for you, but for the title. And then instead of shaking hand, you do this. This one is, it will be well with you. It will be well with you. It will be well with you. Because you, as the... As the king, you are representing the ascensor. And the ascensor will not stand up and hug you or shake hand with you. You have to prostrate for her. And the women will go on their knees. And then in returns, you pray for them. Um, I will advise uh, the young people now, if they have opportunity to try and work on farming, is the only way uh, I think development can come to the country, I mean to our area. Because if you have, if you work on uh, modern farming, not using hand to cultivate, but using machine, uh, uh, well, before we get to before we get to that, we need electricity, stable electricity in that area. Anybody who have opportunity to be political leaders to say to see that the electricity is stable, so that people can work with that. 
that is the only way we can we can develop and that we can have a, a very bright future that everybody will enjoy 